Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I am delighted to share two pieces that I love with you this evening. And uh, the first piece is by two composers in, in some ways. So it's actually written by Johann Sebastian Bach, and it is his Chaconne. His Chaconne in D minor is a very famous Chaconne from his Partita. Um, and so it's the last movement of the Partita in D minor. And this Chaconne was actually arranged by Ferocio Busoni. So it's actually known as the Bach Busoni Chaconne. Now, um, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about uh, Busoni, which is that he was known um, in his time. Uh, as an arranger. He, he actually did many great arrangements of pieces written for other instruments for piano. Um, and one, in, in this particular case, the Chaconne, of course, is very well known for solo violin. Okay, when I say solo, I really mean solo, unaccompanied violin. And it's extremely difficult for the violin to play. It's actually funny, I grew up playing both the violin and the piano. And at one point I learned this partita or actually everything except for the Chaconne <laughs> because the Chaconne is that difficult. It's often played on its own out of all the movements of this partita for violin. So at any rate, Busoni loved this piece and had the vision to write it for the piano. And one thing that's significant about that is if it's for solo violin, you can imagine that the violin is mostly a melody instrument, correct? Now, a violinist, of course, can do chords and break chords, right, if you know um, what's possible. But at the same time, it doesn't have the breadth or the depth of a piano. A piano, of course, can cover all, every range. So he took a piece that's actually to me, very religious. It, um, in a lot of ways, the, his arrangement that you're going to hear, um, you can imagine at times an organist playing it. I mean, it really fills the room. It fills the hall. I think he brings it to another level of reverence. So um, I just absolutely love this arrangement for piano. And maybe again, it's because I couldn't do it on the violin and I can do it on the piano now. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna be starting with this piece. And then uh, right after this, I will be playing the Chopin third ballade in A flat major. And I will talk to you a little bit about that after I play the Bach Busoni Chaconne. Uh, for those of you that are just coming on, uh, my name is Michelle Can. I am so thankful to CultureNet for uh, inviting me to give some of these Facebook concerts. They put on a lot of great concerts. Uh, if you follow their page, you will see all of the concerts that are being um, showcased from home, from everyone's home. And um, I would actually encourage you to leave some comments, please. Uh, I will read them as we go along. And if you have any questions, please ask me. But um, I love hearing from you and your feedback. So please enjoy Bach Busoni's Chicago. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Thank you so much for joining me. You just heard the Bach Busoni Chacon, um, originally written by Bach and arranged by Ferrocio Busoni. Hope you enjoyed this magnificent work. I couldn't decide whether to do it last or first, and I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna put it all out there right at the beginning. <laughs> the next piece is actually quite um, exciting and energetic, but it's definitely uh, lighter than this dark Chacon. <laughs> so I'm going to look now at some of the comments and say hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Stan from Bermuda. <laughs> so good to see you. Evan, one of my former students on here. Hi, Sean, Courtney, and I see Marina. Oh, hey, Marina. Oh, so good to see you. So great seeing um, some names that I haven't talked to or seen in a while and some new faces or new names also. So thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Marsha. Thank you so much for being here. So I want to talk to you about the next piece I'm going to play, which is quite well known. It's one of Chopin's four ballades, third ballade in A flat major. Now, Chopin was actually one of the first composers to use the liter literary title of ballade, which is basically a story, um, for in music and as a title of a piece. And it's actually very interesting because Chopin himself, he did not want to basically put a story, a specific story to his ballads. He wanted the listener to basically take from each piece what they would and what they felt. Uh, that being said, it didn't stop people from deciding what inspired Chopin, you know, at the time or those that knew him. And so there was a poem that um, entitled Undine, which essentially is about a water sprite um, who fell in love with a mortal man. And so that's kind of the, the basis of this poem. So there's thoughts that this poem is related to this ballad. I think that creates great imagery and I think it would be great um, if you want to take that story as I play um, in, through your own imagination. But Chopin did not ever confirm this inspiration. He made a point not to do that. So I think in a lot of ways, I would say, although I give you a little bit of inspiration with this poem and this idea, I would say, write your own story in your mind. Let your heart and your soul take you wherever it will. This is one of my absolute favorite um, of his ballads. All of his ballads are beautiful. This one's really one of my favorites. And it's fun. It was a piece I played when I was much younger, a uh, teenager, and it's so much different coming back to pieces that you played as a teenager with more, well, hopefully skill, but uh, a little bit more wisdom too that you can bring to a piece. So please enjoy the second and final piece of my broadcast today, the Chopin Ballade in A flat major. And I can't wait to talk to you guys after I'm done. <clears throat> condition. I don't want it to affect the sound. So I will start this one again. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Chopin E flat major ballade number three. One of my favorite pieces. It's so joyful. And I hope that the energy of this piece can take you through this week. <laughs> and again, I want to thank all that were here. I'm going to say hello again to those. Uh, Tony, Sean, Evan, again, thank you so much. My aunt, Lisa, so good to see you. Lorenzo, oh, it's so good to see you. My college roommate's husband. <laughs> so fun seeing old and new faces. Hi, Pisai. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you so much for those words. Oh, from Dallas. Hi, Mary Edma, if I'm saying your name right. Oh, Raphael's friend, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi, Mike and Steve. <laughs> oh, it's so, so great. These are such wonderful comments. Oh, Minso, I'm glad you're here. Thank you, one of my students. Oh, it's such a great, it's so great to see all of these wonderful people. And I really want to thank you again for listening, for spending this evening with me in my music room. And I do encourage you to please follow CultureNet. Um, I will be performing again at some point soon. And there's so many other wonderful musicians putting on concerts every week. So please follow CultureNet for more music from home. And I wish you all a wonderful week and, and all the best. Thanks again. <laughs> oh, I see my dad. I have to say <laughs> hello to my dad <laughs> before I go. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. <laughs>